American Dairy Association, the nation's dairy farmers present the Bob Hope Show, transcribed direct from Hollywood with Les Brown and his band of renown. For the American Dairy Association, whose dairy farmers produce the world's finest family of delicious, healthful foods, yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Our singing star, Margaret Whiting. Our special guest, Bert Lancaster. And here he is, Bob Hope. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Here I am again for my new sponsor, the American Dairy Association. You know, it's nice working for someone in the dairy business. If you lay an egg, they put it in a milkshake and sell it. <laughs> yes, sir, and today is Friday the 13th. And if nothing unlucky has happened to you so far, here I am. <laughs> Personally, I don't, uh, I don't believe in superstition, not since the time a fortune teller told me I was going to meet someone who was tall, dark, and musical. Then I found out Liberace was coming to dinner. <laughs> You know Liberace, that's the pianist with a built-in keyboard. <laughs> but here in Los Angeles, ladies and gentlemen, we've just had a census taken, and the latest figures show that we're still growing by leaps and bounds. With the traffic out here, it's the only way you can keep growing. <laughs> but just think of it, a new person arriving in L.A. every 25 seconds. And of course, nobody ever leaves. <laughs> How can they? In our smog, they can't find their way out. <laughs> That's pretty good for an audience on instruments But I'm sorry <laughs> I really shouldn't have said that Because the Chamber of Commerce says There's no such thing as smog here It's just smoke that refuses to leave Because there's no better place to go <laughs> But they've got to admit It does get a little thick sometimes A little thick One couple came out here from Iowa Had a baby and had to move back there To see what it looked like <laughs> But still, people are moving out here to California in droves. In fact, everybody's making money off the newcomers. Remember how the early wagon trains fought the Indians? Well, a caravan of tourists from Minnesota were surrounded on Highway 40 last week, and it took them nine hours to fight off the real estate agents. <laughs> real estate agent, that's a well-dressed octopus. The minute he smells a down payment, he starts squirting ink in all directions. And they're coming in so fast, the builders are rushed to keep up. In fact, they don't bother with floors anymore. They just put up four walls and a roof and sell it. It's the only place in the world where the houses have wall-to-wall -wall grass. <laughs> and more and more, the people aren't bothering with houses. They just live in trailers. In fact, I saw an ad in the paper the other day. Lady with trailer wants to meet man with car. Object to get hitched. <laughs> We have communities out here to fit almost every taste. For instance, if you want to be exclusive, there's Beverly Hills, where all the movie stars live. In fact, I know one actor out there who is so exclusive, he has an unlisted wife. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all sun worshippers there. Even the pigeons fly upside down so they can get an even tan. And no one is ever allowed to die in Beverly Hills. When you're ready to go, they just put you on a bus for Pasadena. <laughs> but in spite of all the people who've come here, we're still trying to get more. All our latest advertising stunt, the latest stunt is to put pictures of movie stars on all the oranges that are shipped out of here. But I don't know how that's going to work. Can't you just imagine a hen-pecked husband squeezing Marilyn Monroe, Lana Turner, and Jane Russell for breakfast? <laughs> Bill Goodman, what are those mm. notes you have scrawled there? Looks like uh, feeding of babies? Well, it's babies and older folks, too, Bob. I'd like to talk for a minute about evaporated milk. For years, most every mother has known how valuable evaporated milk is for babies and for old people, too. But I'd like to point out that evaporated milk has an outstanding advantage in making so many wonderful foods. 
Things like homemade candy, pumpkin pie, cake frosting, for instance. Many kinds of main dishes turn out smoother, creamier. You see, evaporated milk has all the great food values of whole milk, protein, vitamins, and minerals, especially calcium. The difference is that evaporated milk has about half the water removed, and thrifty homemakers everywhere know that evaporated milk is a money saver. This great dairy product is mighty convenient, too. You'll want to keep evaporated milk on your pantry shelf to use when you need extra milk for cooking and when you've unexpected guests to feed. Discover what wonderful, smooth, delicious eating your family can enjoy when you cook with evaporated milk. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you never can tell what'll start your day off on the wrong foot. Now, with Bob, it was the arrival of the mailman at his home in North Hollywood this morning. Here's a couple letters for you, Mr. Hope. Oh, thanks, Charlie. Yeah, and here's your magazines. Screen romances, movie parade, silver screen, Hollywood star review, film fan magazine, Hollywood movie idols, and Hollywood glamour marriage stories. Boy, you sure go for highbrow reading, Mr. Hope. <laughs> well, somebody has to keep score for Rita. <laughs> All them magazine covers. Marilyn Monroe on every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't them beautiful pictures of her? Yeah, but they'll never top the first one. <laughs> Anything else for me, Charlie? No, no, that's a load. Coming out on a bus, I was reading a swell article in one of the magazines about you. An article about me? Yeah, I'll show you. See. Yeah, here it is. It's called Bob Hope, Kind, Generous, Humble, and Full of Humility. <laughs> You're sure it's an article about me? Sounds like an application to get on the Arthur Godfrey show. <laughs> and listen to this. It says Bob is fine, sincere, sweet. Honest, thoughtful, pure, noble, and true. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Hope, you know what? What? Little Orphan Annie used to be my idol. Now it's you. <laughs> Come on, get out of here. <laughs> Gee, what a fresh postman. I think I'll phone Humphrey Bogart and tell him to let his dogs out. Their lunch is coming up the street. <laughs> Well, I better finish reading this article. It says, Bob is warm and friendly. When you enter his home, Bob comes bounding across the room to you, his big brown eyes shining with friendliness. Mm-hmm. Gee, what a nice sentiment. I sound like something on the label of a can of kennel ration. <laughs> Gee, I'll have to try to be more friendly to live up to this. Wonder who that can be. Oh, hello, Goodwin. Oh, I mean, hiya, Bill. Gee, it's good to see you. Come in and sit down, boy. What did I do? <laughs> oh, nothing at all, Bill. I just want to be friendly, that's all. Yeah? Sure, I just want you to know that I like you. I like you a lot. Bob, I've told you a hundred times I don't lend money. <laughs> when I got married, I burned my book of phone number. <laughs> Bill, I don't want a thing from you. I just want to know how you're getting along. Are you happy on the radio show? Say, what are you driving at? I'm just asking, that's all. Well, because I can get other jobs, you know. <laughs> Twenty of shows want a first-class announcer with a good voice and glorious yeah. rippling hair. Yeah. <laughs> and teeth to match. <laughs> Look, Bill, I'm just trying to be friendly. I don't see why you should get sore at oh, me. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, a rehearsal yesterday, didn't you tell the sponsor that I have the face of a low-grade moron? Of course not, Bill. I never told a sponsor anything like that about your face. You didn't? No. All I said was you can find a more intelligent expression on any marshmallow at farmer's market. <laughs> well, that does it. Goodbye. What do you mean, goodbye? I knew when you started that sweet talk what you were leading up to. What I'm leading up to? That's right, and I'm not going to give you the chance to fire me. I quit. Now, wait a minute. What about our contract? Well, I don't know about your copy, but I haven't got mine anymore. What became of it? We ran out of paper in our towel machine. <laughs> goodbye. Gee, what's the matter with everybody today? 
I haven't seen anybody go to pieces like that since my granddaddy tried to find a gas leak with a candle. <laughs> Imagine Goodwin walking out like that. Hi, Bob. Oh, hello, Maggie. Come in. Sit down. Thank you. Gee, you're certainly loaded with fan magazines. Yeah, well, the kids like to look through them, but there's a marvelous article in this magazine that says, I ooze charm, I ooze graciousness, I ooze personality. Say, that's nice oozing. <laughs> <laughs> don't get any on you. <laughs> Who wrote all this about you, Bob? I don't know. The writer, the name is Pamela St. Clair. You might know it would be a woman. Oh, yes, I guess so. <laughs> Listen, Bob, what about doing some work? Are we going to rehearse this morning? No, we'll have to postpone rehearsal for a while till Bill Goodwin gets over a fit of temperament. Bill Goodwin? Yeah. Temperament? Bill, get out of line. There isn't room for a bullheaded, stubborn guy in this show. Not while I'm here. <laughs> well, if there's no rehearsal, that leaves me with nothing to do, so I think I'll go shopping. I'll go with you, Maggie. I want to drop in at Woolworths and pick out Crosby's Christmas present. Let's go. <laughs> Here, give me those bundles, too. Well, you're already carrying quite a stack of bundles, Bob. Well, just put them on top, Maggie. But, Bob, if I do that, you won't be able to see where you're going at all. Why, you'll be bumping into the homely girls, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm only practicing for the holiday crowds. Really, Maggie, I can carry all this stuff for you. Gee, Bob, why are you so sweet today? Well, confidentially, it's that magazine article by Pamela St. Clair. I'm turning over a new leaf. Says you. No, I mean it. I'm going to help people. Be considerate. At lunch, it was the new Bob Hope that held your chair for you. When you dropped your napkin, it was the new Bob Hope who picked it up for you. Yeah, and then the check came, and the old Bob Hope made me pay my half. <laughs> well, I left a tip. <laughs> I never did care much for the asparagus anyway. <laughs> Say, you better got... You better guide me along the street, Margaret. I can't see anything over this high pile of bundles. Yeah, you're really hidden behind all those packages. Oh, look, there's Bert Lancaster. Hiya, Bert. <laughs> Hello, Maggie. How are you, honey? Oh, I'm just fine, thanks. What show are you singing with now, Maggie? Well, I'm on the Hope Show. You mean you're still working for that Bob Hope guy? That's right. Boy, you must be a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Bob's not so bad. Ah. He's a slave driver. He makes everyone who works on his show do all the chores around his house. Well, uh, I... Listen, I happen to know it's true. I drive by Bob's house every day, and I see Bill Goodwin and Les Brown mowing the lawn and clipping the hedges. <laughs> Although, come to think of it, I haven't seen him for the past couple of weeks. Oh, wait till we get the well dug. We'll all be above the ground again. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't talk about Hope this way, because I really don't know him very well. I used to see him around the country club once in a while, till he, uh, well, he got thrown out for cheating at poker. <laughs> Bob was cheating? No, uh, we're pretty sure of it. Well, what made you think so? Oh, little things, the way he handled the cards, the way he shuffled them. One night, the spring in his coat went haywire, and his left sleeve rained aces for ten minutes. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know Bob would do anything like that. Yeah, that boss of yours is full of tricks. Bob is a snake in the grass, a real snake in the grass. And by the way, Maggie, who's the gentleman behind with all the bundles? Aren't you going to introduce me to him? He doesn't have to. You know me better than she does. <laughs> Bob, I didn't realize that was you standing there. Yeah, this is me, the old dartboard. How are you? <laughs> well, for goodness sakes, why didn't you say something? Well, if you'd given me the chance, I'd have shaken my rattles. <laughs> Bob, do you really cheat at cards? Maggie, you've known me long enough to know better than that. Did you or didn't you? Well, <laughs> well let me put it this way. Look at my face. Do I look... <laughs> Do I look like a crooked card sharp? Well, maybe you better put it another way. <laughs> well, I'll admit I haven't been a very nice guy, Bert, but that's all changed. From now on, I'm going to be nice and thoughtful and considerate to everyone. 
What brought this all on? It's a magazine article. It's such a brilliant analysis of my true character that I'm going to try and live up to it. (laughs) But I'm going to be a different person. Friend of the needy, helper of the weary, rescuer of those in distress. I don't know what more I can do. You might put a keg of brandy around your neck and head for the Alps. (laughs) Come on, Bob. I've got to finish my shopping. Okay, so long, Bert. So long, folks. Oh, oh, by the way, Bert. Say, how about doing a guest shot of my show this week? Fine, Bob. I'd be glad to make a little extra loot. You know, my family's beginning to show me up. Your family show you up? I've got to tell you about this. This is really cute. My little daughter just sold a piece to a magazine. She got 20 bucks for it, and she's only seven years old. Little Susan Ben? Yeah, and she uses a pen name, too. A pen name? What's it called? <laughs> Pamela St. <Saint> Clair. <laughs> And here's the singing lady from Detroit and Capitol Platters, Margaret Whiting, singing My Love, My Love. We often hear about the good old days when a dozen or so relatives would descend on Grandma all at the same time and she'd entertain them for days. It's perhaps even more of a problem for today's hostess to take care of unexpected company. Folks don't have so many spare beds as they used to. But when it comes to the food problem, evaporated milk is a real lifesaver. With a few extra cans on the pantry shelf, it's easy to take one down and use it in a moment for smooth cream soups, a hurry-up meatloaf, a tasty custard, or other appetizing desserts. Use it also to put a tempting shiny brown glaze on hot biscuits. Evaporated milk can help you save money because it truly glorifies so many of your standby economy ingredients. 
And like all dairy products, evaporated milk is a good money value as well as a good food value. You get results you can be proud of every time. For evaporated milk gives food that smooth, creamy texture, which makes dishes especially good. Keep evaporated milk on hand for emergencies. Use evaporated milk also for your day-to-day -day cookery. You get wonderful eating when you cook with evaporated milk. Hey, that's well done, Bill. You really live those commercials, don't you? Thanks. Well, have you gotten over your little flare-up? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. I feel fine now. Why should I have feelings about anything on this show? I'm only the announcer. <laughs> I'm glad he got over it. <laughs> hey, he's pretty hard to control, isn't he, Bob? Oh, Bill's a nice guy. I know a way to control him, but I hate to do it. How's that? Pay him more money. <laughs> he's still dreaming about the big dough he got in the army. <laughs> in the army? You're kidding. Yeah, but that leads us into talking about your picture, Bert, about army life from here to eternity. Oh, have you seen it, Bob? Oh, boy, I caught it the other night at a drive-in theater. It was a wonderful double feature. Say, wait a minute. That picture's playing all alone. I know. The other feature was in my car. <laughs> I, see. I happen to take Jane Russell, but don't get the wrong idea. It was just a matter of having someone to talk to. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You spend an evening in a drive-in theater with Jane Russell, and you talk to her? Yeah, it's a wonderful place to play 20 questions. And Jane Russell's such a nice partner, too mm. Well, tell me, Bob How did you like From Here to Eternity, huh? Oh, wonderful, Bert What power, what impact I was breathless, shaken, dazed Lifted right out of my seat You mean the picture affected you that much? What picture? Waterfield caught us <laughs> I thought his drop-kicking days were over Bob, I think you made the whole thing up. In fact, I don't think Jane Russell would even go out with you. Are you kidding? Bert, that girl is out of her mind over me. Well, that could explain it. <laughs> hey, that's very clever. <laughs> Too late to get Gregory Peck. What is it? <laughs> but seriously, Bert, you gave a tremendous performance in From Here to Eternity, that scene on the beach with you and Deborah Carr. <laughs> Yes, Bob, everyone says it was quite a love scene Never mind what everyone says, what'd your wife say? <laughs> well, I took her to see the picture three weeks ago But I don't know how she feels about that particular scene You don't? She hasn't spoken to me since <laughs> well, Why don't you do what I do, Bert? After a passionate love scene with Rosemary Clooney or Arlene Dahl Or if I'm caught in a little flirtation, I always buy Dolores a mink coat How is Dolores, Bob? Warm <laughs> Anyway, Bert, I sure enjoyed From Here to Eternity. How are you going to follow such a terrific part? Well, I've got a picture in the works now about an outlaw Apache. I'm an Indian who won't play ball with the rest of the tribe. I got a whole team of Indians like that back in Cleveland. <laughs> Bert, I understand even in rugged action pictures, you never use a stuntman. Well, not very often, Bob. You see, I used to be an acrobat with a circus. Yeah, that was my ambition too, Bert Did you ever try to get a job with the circus? Yes, I did, Bert I'll never forget the day the circus came to our town Here you are, folks See the India rubber man They're hoochie-coochie dancers Yeah, I was just a kid And I was thrilled by the crowds The noise, the big tents and Then I saw a sign on one of the wagons Acrobat wanted I climbed the steps and knocked on the door Come in what do you want, son? Hey, did you put up that sign Acrobat wanted? That's right. My last assistant fell 100 feet and broke his neck. The one before him slipped off a trapeze and broke his back. The one before him fell into the tiger cage and was torn to pieces. What's on your mind? You need anyone to sell the cotton candy? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're just like a million other kids, son. I suppose you just can't wait to join the circus, Yes, huh? sir, that's the life for me, boy. Well, let me tell you, you don't know what you're getting into. It's tough work and long hours, and you'll never get rich. I still want to do it, sir. I'd sure I'd make it a good acrobat. I'll do a lot of work on the farm, you know, and I, I'm very strong. You are, huh? Take off your shirt. Let's have a look at you. Okay, I'll take off my shirt. There, well, that's fine. I... Holy smoke, is that you? What's the matter? Didn't you ever see muscles before? Yeah, but not hanging in bunches like great. <laughs> When I flex them, they get bigger. What 
It's like an orange tree. <laughs> well, we're in a tight spot. Maybe we can use you anyway. You're going to give me a job? Yeah. One of the tightrope walkers just left us. What happened? He was tight. The rope wasn't. <laughs> Gee, a fella could get killed around here. What's the matter, kid? Don't you want the job? I'll think it over and let you know. Hiya, Bert. We go on in ten minutes. Okay. Gee, who are you? Who am I? Yeah, gosh. You sure look pretty in them long silk tights and all them red and gold spangles. You work here in the circus? Oh, no, these are my regular clothes. Something I just whipped up. <laughs> you better whip them again. They still ain't behaving. <laughs> Hey, Bert, who is this kid? I don't know. He come in and asked for a job, but he's going to think it over and let me know. Are you, honey? Are you going to be with us? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I think he just thought it over and let me know. <laughs> Gee, ma'am, I sure like you. You do? Yeah, you're prettier than a litter of pigs rooting for turnips in the mud patch. <laughs> Trixie, we got to get over to the main tent. Shall I uh, throw the kid out of here? No, he's kind of cute. Let him stay. Gee, Trixie, this last six months has been wonderful, working in the circus and being with you. I like being with you, too. Hey, you. Trixie's my girl. So what? Every time I see her, you're hugging her, squeezing her, kissing her. Did I tell you not to fool around with her? Who's fooling? <laughs> Come on, the ringmaster's announcing our act. And kid, we're through. I'm going to send you back to your ma on the farm. I'm never going back to ma on the farm. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, in the main top above the center ring, the flying Lancasters. In their death-defying trapeze at the 500-foot giant swing. Here I go! Hey, hey, grab my hands, Bert! Bert, grab my hands! So long, kid! Oh. Pull up a chair, son. Supper's ready. <laughs> Hey, you listeners who eat out a great deal know that little things often tell you a lot about the quality of the food you'll get. A restaurant menu that says, we serve only butter, indicates a chef and a management who intend to see that you get only the best of everything. The next time you eat out, notice how those generous servings of butter are a subtle reminder that you'll dine well. People who demand good food demand butter. They can tell the difference. They know that butter flavor is better flavor. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the memory. I want to thank Bert Lancaster very much for adding talent to this show. Congratulations on a wonderful performance and a wonderful picture from here to eternity. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to take a minute to salute the Red Feather Workers, volunteers all, who finish up their house-to-house -house canvas tomorrow. We're all well acquainted with the many activities of the community chess and know of its work with our youngsters, the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Wise, and other groups as well as about its work in family welfare, national emergencies, and with our boys overseas. During the past two weeks, these wonderful volunteer workers have covered many, many miles and have rung many, many doorbells. I hope you've been at home and been able to give in support of this great campaign. If not, maybe you'll take a minute now to send in a contribution to your local headquarters of the community chest. Please do. Thank you very much. Be sure to listen to the Bob Hope Show next week from Hollywood with our special guest, Paul Douglas. Burt Lancaster can soon be seen in Warner Brothers' production, His Majesty O'Keefe. The American Dairy Association, the nation's dairy farmers, have brought you the Bob Hope Show, an NBC Radio Network production written by Norman Sullivan and Charles Stewart and transcribed direct from Hollywood, California. Remember, butter flavor is better flavor. <laughs> <laughs>